Hello, everybody, and welcome to another recollection of the 2012 World Bowls Championships in the 10-year anniversary of what was a golden tournament for the Australian Jackaroos. Five gold medals, including this one, the men's fours. Val Febo here with you with Aaron Sheriff, Mark Casey, Wayne Rudiger, and Brett Wilkie reviewing what was a wonderful tournament for this quartet of gentlemen. Guys, how you doing? Good. It's good, good. Val. good to have you all on. Good, thanks, Val. It's been um, 10 years. It's a long time and time does fly very, very quickly. So first things first, when I'll, I'll ask all four of you sort of individually, but uh, Omar, we'll start with you. When you look back on this tournament 10 years ago, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Uh, I guess can't believe it's gone so fast, really. I mean, um, you know, it was a, it was an amazing event. Um, the most successful Australian team, uh, at a world championships. Um, and yeah, it sort of feels like yesterday and, and sort of to think that, um, 10 years has gone by and, and so much has happened for all four of us, uh, in our lives. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. And Rudy, it was your first major event. Um, looking back, you know, you were a world champion almost immediately. How, how, how does that sit with you when you look back and you go, geez, that it was just such an unbelievable rise so quickly. Oh, it was just an amazing trip to play it with, uh, with these three blokes. Um, it was absolutely fantastic. They, uh, they pretty much babysat me the whole way and uh, I just tried to do my little bit and uh, that was just fantastic. And a world championship win at home, that must have been unreal. Yeah, the crowd was amazing. Yeah, it was, there was chants and cheering and it was, just, it was actually a bit scary to be honest. I, I, I think I... I think I froze, froze for a little while, but uh, snapped myself out of it and hopefully I played a half-decent final in the end. And Mark, you'd played a Commonwealth Games on home soil as well. Um, talk to us about the comparisons between the two. Yeah, obviously a Commonwealth Games, is, um, it's got its different uh, things about it with the village and um, you're mixing with other athletes, whereas the, the World Championship, it's especially our, our Olympics. So it's the, it's the big one for us and... Um, yeah, to, to win a gold medal uh, on home soil, uh, and particularly for Rudy, you know, as Rudy just said, he, there was chance for Rudy and all that sort of stuff. It was uh, it was a really special day and um, something that uh, we're, all four of us can look back on uh, with special memories, that's for sure. And Brett, it was your first World Championships as well. Now, what what it, what was what was going through your mind going into the tournament? You'd played a Com Games already, um, but. As Kay said, it's a sort of a different kettle of fish in a way. So what was going through your mind? Yeah, being at home games, it was exciting. We had a really good preparation. We'd been there a number of times leading up to in, in sort of major events, but also training camps. And uh, to have the local local hero, Rudy, there, it just really gained the local support, which, which you know, I know when we played the final, there was a huge crowd there. They were very vocal. And uh, I think it helped make a difference in the end, get us over the line. We also had our families there and also some close friends that travelled down from Queensland. So it was a great atmosphere and, and it was very exciting and great to come away with a win. And how much time, I'm not sure who wants to answer this, but how much time did you guys have as a foursome before the event? So how many matches did you guys get to play and how much time was there to gel as a team and sort of get your strategy right? Uh, yeah, well, I guess in the lead up to it, we played um, Edelong Fours. And I think the team originally was selected with Wiz at lead and Rudy at two. Um, and we, yeah, we had an opportunity to play, well, I think that tournament was about eight games. Um, so during that process, we probably realised that um, Rudy was better on the map and Wiz are playing two. And um, it gave us an opportunity to work out the combination and, and get it right. So I think the, the preparation was key. Um, in getting, um, you know, the positions and the, and the way we played uh, are correct. But having said that, even at Worlds, we, we had a couple of hiccups. We had a, a couple of um, good conversations uh, at the end of the day. And, um, you know, we still were working on it right up until uh, pretty much the semi-final. And, um, yeah, I guess, you know, having those lead-up events and tournaments um, gave us a great opportunity to gel and, and you know, work out what all four of us needed out of one another um, to become world champions. And I want to ask about those little hiccups that you mentioned. So that was a draw against Fiji in round three and a loss to Jersey in round four. So 
after that, you went nine and zero and didn't lose for the rest of the tournament. So what conversations did you guys have after those little minor hiccups? Because you still finished top of your group. And well, yeah, as I said, you didn't lose after that. I think with us all being good mates, we were open and honest and uh, we're able to talk to each other and without any any sort of ego. So we we worked out what we needed to do to to change a few little, couple little things and and uh, had a good conversation and then it worked well. So it's only little minor things that wasn't a lot of difference, but uh, just made that little bit of extra difference to to help get over the line in the end. Yeah, nice. And I think the rivalry in the tournament, as Omar alluded to, case was uh, with all the semifinal, I guess, Scotland. Um, you played them in your first group game as well, or second group game. It was very, very close. You won by two. And then the semifinal you won by one. How close was the rivalry between the two countries considering that already uh, won two gold medals and beaten Australia in a couple of uh, disciplines so far? Yeah, spot on. Uh, obviously, Scotland in the men's, arguably on paper, um, you know, they've got some of the best players in the world. So we knew, you know, we we're up against it um, and, and we're probably going into the matches underdogs, which was, which was fine by us. So um, as the boys alluded to, you know, we were face our challenges, but, uh, you know, as you do normally in these big events anyway. So uh, it wasn't foreign, um, but uh, those games against Scotland definitely helped us, um, you know, hang tough in the, in the tough situations. And, um, you know, we were able to get into that grand final and, and get the job done. And what was the key to sort of maintaining the focus in that semifinal in such a tight match in such a, on such a big occasion? Um, Rudy, I'll ask you in your sort of first major event, you know, how, how was it for you trying to ensure that you kept your composure and sort of kept going out there? I guess I guess in that semi-final, we got off to a bit of a flyer, I think. You know, I think we were, we were oh, I don't know, 15 in front or thereabouts at one stage and, and cruising and uh, it was about the halfway mark and then things got a bit scary. They, uh, I think they got a six or a seven and the next end they held, a, held another big number and then I think the next end... Omar had a play to crack it, a kill it, and and we, we were, went from cruising to being in all sorts of strife, and but then we hung hung strong at the end and was able just to get over the line. And after you do that, you face South Africa in the final. Now, what were the feelings going into the final? Last, I'll ask you, Omar. You'd played them, uh, so Scotland was round two, South Africa was round one. They were your opponents in the final. You'd beaten them fifteen ten. How was the confidence going in, considering you'd leaped over such a big hurdle in the Scottish? Yeah, well, I think our, our final didn't start till about maybe 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So um, I guess the morning uh, was pretty cruisy. Um, from memory, I think we might have uh, had a barbie together or something like that mid-morning for you know something decent to eat. Um, you know, the vibe was pretty good uh, coming off a a, uh, a you know, tough semi-final win but um, I guess the beauty for us was that the final was played on the B green not the actual show green so throughout that event B green was probably the best green um, at Lockley so um, that gave us a fair bit of confidence um, the greens were left to run on their merit so uh, she was pretty quick I think for the final so um, yeah everything sort of you know felt like it was in our favour so uh, you know it was just a matter of uh, backing one another and, and going out and um, going through the process. So I think that game, we actually got off to a bit of a stinker. I think we were seven nil down or something. So, um, yeah, probably wasn't the greatest start, uh, but um, yeah, no, it was a, it was a pretty remarkable uh, final really being seven nil down. And then I think the last couple ends, I think it was, well, the last end we, we replayed that a couple of times, but it was, it was almost like, just trying to put a blocker in so that they couldn't kill the end so we could just get off and enjoy what it was, you know, us becoming world champions. So, yeah, I think getting through that tough semi-final, um, the conditions and everything sort of suited us more than South Africa. And it was just sort of, you know, I guess, you know, the dream final in the end. Now, I want to ask you all this individually. When you realise and when after these couple of ends were played, well, I'll start with you, Brett. What was the first emotion that went through your mind when you realised, oh, my God, I'm a world champion? Yeah, it was very exciting. Um, you know, it was a great atmosphere in the final with the local crowd, very vocal. And, yeah, just to hang on and, and to do it with, with great mates, it was, yeah, it was just very, you know, it's a sort of a dream come to, true. So it was, 
it was just a memory I'll never forget. And uh, it was just like all the hard work. We'd had a really big build up uh, to that. So it was great to to come away with with the end goal of what we were all trying to achieve together. And case rarefied air for you, actually, because you were a Commonwealth champion and now a world champion. And you became the first Australian male bowler to do so. And the only person to join you since is Disco. So talk to us about how that sits with you as part of such an illustrious club and what went through your mind when you when you became world champion? Yeah, at the time, that certainly wasn't, um, you know, I wasn't thinking about that. It was more um, the fact doing it with with three good mates. And, um, you know, I was lucky enough. That was Jackson's um, year of birth. So he was only a few months old and, and he was there watching me. Um, and that was a special year all around, on and off the green. I was able to, to, to sort of win the Australian Open and, and train indoor in that fun year. Um, but looking back now, it's a yeah, it's an achievement that I'm really proud of. And um, obviously, Disco was to join me pretty quickly. It took only took him about about a year. So, um, but no, it's something to look look back on fond memories. And um, it was more the yeah, doing it for your mates and and looking forward to a couple of nights of celebrations. That was a, that was a feeling at the time. And Rudy, how special was it for you? Oh, it was just amazing. Like to do it in uh, in Adelaide and. And with these three blokes, it was just uh, just an amazing experience. And like that last end, I, I thought we had it won the first time and he, he's killed it off something. I don't know how he's killed it, but he's killed it. And then we had to redo it again. And um, yeah, luckily we, um, we we played some of the best blockers you've ever seen in your life. And, <laughs> and uh, well, I think it was about five in a row, perfect blockers. And uh, I think they peeled it off every time, but we were able to uh, get the chocolates. And Omar, after a silver in 2008, how sweet was it to be able to stand on that top step and, and have that gold medal draped around your neck? Oh, yeah, it was it was incredible. Um, I mean, the, I suppose the beauty of it is too that, you know, being in the fours, um, you know, winning no matter like any world title is incredible. And, and obviously the singles is the blue ribbon, but, you know, winning a singles world title, you only celebrate that with yourself. So... Um, you know, the beauty of winning it with the fours, you get to celebrate it with um, with three mates. And, and, you know, every time we catch up, we can reminisce about that. And, um, you know, just, yeah, it's, I guess, we're a family now. Um, you know, we'll always have this together. And, um, yeah, and to do it in Australia um, and in front of Rudy's home crowd, I think there was probably a couple hundred people there. So, um, you know, often to this day, you know, get to events and and people will uh, will say, oh, I was there on that day. He's won the fours and all that. So it's not just about us. It was about everyone that was there and and the Australian bowls community. So it was really cool. And it was also can... great supporting life, winning the singles as well. You know, to for everyone to all all win a, a title together along with the girls. It was just a a great tour to be a part of with the coaching staff, um, support staff, and also the girls as well along with life it was just the whole the whole vibe of the team for the whole trip was just awesome to be involved in and that's another thing i want to ask you guys the the whole sort of jackaroo's family aspect it's re- a really important thing that steve glass and instilled in the squad and now gary willis is doing the same thing now you won the taylor trophies and the wm leonard trophies uh trophy to um to as the best nation in both the women's and men's tournaments everyone all 10 athletes left with a gold how much do you guys cherish that tournament and how much and how strong did it create the bond between not just the four of you, but also the entirety of the squad? Um, yeah, no, that, that was one of the, the main things that Glass brought in to, um, to the squad in general was, uh, was a culture first attitude. So um, if you weren't on the same page as everyone else, uh, you soon found yourself left out. So um, it was, uh, you know, that trip alone, you know, I know the boys got along particularly well. Uh, we had a lot of good moments. Uh, um, some that I probably can't say in this video, but uh, we, um, you know, we got along perfectly as a team. We're all we we're all good mates. Um, so it was a special time, and, and that we've got to thank Glass and the high performance staff for that. He um, he really brought that to the table, and as a group, um, you know, we we sort of bought in, and uh, the results were, um, came with it. Amazing. And um, I'll ask each of you again, individually, where do you guys keep the gold medals? So Rudy, where's yours? Uh, mine's on my wall at home, you know, with a, a picture frame of, of all the boys and uh, 
and yeah, it's uh, it's it's uh, right right next to my kitchen. So it's every time I can chop up the veggies, I've uh, I, I can see that. Case, oh, I'm much the same. I got my uh, the shirt framed with the the gold and silver. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's up at home somewhere. I think it's in one of the rooms, but um, yeah, it's something uh, yeah, very special. And Brett. Oh uh, yeah, same with me. My my wife uh, did up a frame with the with the three medals in it the the gold, the silver, and also the overall uh, best performed team. So yeah, pride of place in my office on the wall at home. Amazing. And Omar, is yours framed as well? No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got too no, many. Not yet. No, it's um, I'll, you know, my wife uh, in the old house we had back down in New South Wales. She put them up all in the garage it was a bit of a, a shrine type thing, but having moved a few times uh, in the last sort of five or six years, um, we haven't got back to that yet, but um, yeah, it's uh, obviously something once I retire from international bowls, I can, you know, go through, um, you know, a few of the successes, including this one and, and maybe do up a, I don't know, some sort of picture frame or a, or a shrine or a wall of some description and, and um, you know, and, and cherish it. But I mean, as I say, things like that are great to have but you know it's always it's always in the mind it's always in the heart and you know it's something we'll never forget one final one before i let you go omar um you're still in the jackaroo squad now you've just come back into the team and how much is the or how much drive is there now after you know this recollection of 10 years to go to go again next year again on home soil on the gold coast really exciting world bowls championships the first one in seven years it'll be by the time it rolls around how much drive is there for you to go back and and get yet another gold uh huge yeah i probably the last 12 months i wasn't sure if i wanted it or needed it so to speak but um getting back around the squad and getting back involved and um you know thinking about the feelings and that from you know 2012 and then have an opportunity potentially to to play another world championship so um you know on the gold coast so for me my home now like Rudy was in Adelaide so um yeah no fully committed um you know ready to go again and and hopefully uh, gain selection and then uh add a add another world title well, if you are there, we'll try and get those Omar chants going like we did with Rudy back in 2012 <laughs> to uh, to try and replicate it. But guys, it's been a pleasure sitting here with you and recalling what was a wonderful tournament for the four of you. And um, it's a pleasure to sit here with such bowls legends and um, and to see you guys again all reminisce and the big smiles on your faces. It's great. So Aaron, Sheriff, Mark Casey, Wayne Rudiger and Brett Wilkie, thank you very much for joining me here on Bowls Australia's uh, little special uh, recollection. Thanks, Thanks for that. Stick around to Bowls Australia's social media channels for more of these uh, recollections. It's been great to reminisce about the 2012 World Bowls Championships at Lockleys. We'll uh, do it again very soon.